In today's video, we are going to have a look at how we can create a placeholder image. Imagine you have a list of records, uh, which contain each of which contains a reference to an image. But for some reason, one of them may not have an image, or the image has been removed by mistake or anything like this. Uh, at which point, as you can see, the second image here displays this placeholder image and it's the actual image if you can see that I'm when I'm dragging this across you can see that's actually the image uh, we have three other images which uh, records which have images and this one obviously does not so in order to create something like this we are going to use the uh, package called intervention image uh, which makes use uh, of either image magic or GD library to uh, basically interact with images to generate them uh, crop resize and so on so the first thing we need is to install a few packages. If we go to packages.org and let's search for the first one, which is going to be this intervention image. There we go, that's the one. If we click on the name of the package and then just copy the line composer require and the package name. If we go to terminal, before we actually go to the terminal, let me show you, I'm starting with a completely empty uh, root directory for the project. So we don't have any exercise files. Uh, I'm starting fresh. And if I open the terminal, the, I'm already within this placeholder directory. If I do pwd, you'll see this is when it's pointing. pointing. So uh, I can paste this command directly here and hit return. This will install all the dependencies together with the package. As you can see now, once it's refreshed, we have a vendor uh, directory, obviously with the autoloader and all these dependencies. Then we have a composer JSON. If I open this, it tells me that obviously within the require section, we have this uh, intervention image package. The next package we are going to need, uh, the next three packages that we're going to install will be purely for, uh, for the tests we are going to write later on. Uh, the first one is going to be uh, simply PHP unit. So PHP unit, there we go. If we install this one using the same approach, so just copy this composer require, uh, clear screen command K on the keyboard. And this time, rather than installing this under require, we want to install this under require dev because this package is only required when we develop, when, when we develop developing the, uh, the whole application basically. So a hyphen hyphen dev and hit return. Once all this is done, let's go back to uh, our project, as you can see within the composer, the new uh, section has been created, this require hyphen dev, and there we go, basically we've got this PHP unit. Okay, next package we're going to need is uh, the mockery, because we're going to mock the intervention um, classes, so mockery, mockery, there we go. So that's the one, same thing, let's copy this composer require back to the terminal paste it again this is only for development so uh, hyphen hyphen dev hit return and the last package we are going to need is called vfs stream if we click on this one and as it says here, it's a virtual file system to mock the real uh, file system in unit tests. It allows us to, to basically mock the file system in our tests rather than using the actual uh, file system, saving files to the, the hard drive and so on. We're going to do everything in memory while we're testing. So copy again the composer require back to the terminal, paste it in. Oops, uh, I should have specified a dev flag. Let's go back to uh, our editor and let's just cut it from within the require section, let's remove this uh, comma at the end as well, because we within the JSON file, JSON isn't as forgiven as, uh, as PHP. So if you had a comma here, that would, uh, but as you can see, it's highlighting in red. So we need to make sure that the comma at the end, if it's the last item, uh, you don't have any comma at the end. Okay, so now I've moved this package obviously to uh, development dependencies. Uh, we can save the, uh, close the composer basically, a JSON file, and let's create the source directory first. So source, this is where our code will be stored. And another thing I'm going to do is create the index.php file index.php and within this file I'm just going to put require and let's require our autoloader from within the vendor directory autoload.php okay for now we're just going to close this index.php file because we won't be doing anything more uh, for the time being uh, next thing within the source directory we're going to create directory for our uh, image maker is the class we're going to create um, call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it utilities, basically. 
so if you are working with the existing system obviously put it somewhere that it makes sense so utilities directory for now and the name of the class is going to be image maker and the namespace will be i will call my namespace up and then obviously utilities so up utilities there we go if we hit an okay and that has created our class a uh, open composer.json we need to specify the auto loading here as well so auto load and in between the double quotes obviously and then we have psr-4 and for psr4 we want this up namespace and then two backslashes colon and where we want to point this namespace is going to be src and then forward slash so basically whenever you use we're using up namespace at the beginning uh, that's going to point to the source direction then obviously whatever directory we have there as we did with this image maker so we have up and then utilities and our image maker class is right here okay so to start with first thing i need to do is to um, uh, let's specify basically whatever class we are going to use here we are going to use this e image manager of the intervention so image uh, manager intervention image so it's intervention image image manager this is the package we're going to be using here uh, but this is intervention image package and this is the name of the class we're going to make use of and let's specify a few properties i'm going to put them all as private we encapsulate them all we don't want uh, anyone to have access to, to them directly from outside of this class uh, so private and we start with a directory and by default what i'm going to do is point to assets and then image hyphen maker and i'm putting uh, slashes on both sides as uh, so a basic director separator i'm working on uh, on uh, mac uh, which is a unix system uh, on linux if you are working it's the same thing on windows it would be backslash but don't worry specify it this way because when we are actually going to be pointing to the image from within the browser you still need to have forward slashes regardless of what system you're using and we are going to use a, a functionality here within this class which if you are uh, if we are going to be pointing uh, for to the file using the absolute path we're going to replace this based on what system uh, we are actually on uh, so that's the directory let's create this directory within our uh, within the root of our project it's going to be assets and then we have image hyphen maker there we go so we go assets directory and then within this directory we have image maker next thing is going to be private property called manager then we're going to have private property image then we are going to have private property called width by default i want my image to be 600 if we don't specify otherwise then private height which will be 400 so basically we're going to have a horizontal image then after this we are going to have private extension which by default i want to be png then we are going to have private background which is going to be background color by default i want the image to have uh, white color so ff 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 you can use the short uh, shorthand just three of them i'm going to use the full uh, six uh, characters and then we're going to have a private file name which is where we're going to store the file and once we've actually generated it okay let's add the dog blocks for the directory that's just a string so string then we have for the manager it's going to be image manager which is what we've imported right here at the top and uh, then for the image we are going to have uh, backslash intervention then image image that's what it's going to represent then for the width that's obviously an integer for the height it's going to be the same integer for the extension that's going to be a string uh, for the background it's going to be a string as well and for the file name we also will have a string obviously this one doesn't have a default value but it's going to be a string okay so these are our 
uh, properties. Now, the next thing we're going to do is to create a constructor. I'm going to create a few new lines so we can shift it up a little bit. Okay, so we start with the uh, new constructor and constructor will uh, basically take the image manager uh, instance and associate it with uh, our manager property. So that's the, the argument that we is going to be required for this uh, uh, class to instantiate. Okay, the next thing we need is uh, the first, basically, the, the me method that we're going to create within this class is going to be called set directory. Let's say we don't want to save the file to this specific directory. We would like to overwrite, like for within the test, this is what we're going to do. Uh, uh, this will basically allow us, this setter will allow us to overwrite this default value. So public function, because it needs to be ac uh, accessible from the outside of this class, uh, set directory and we take the path as argument and then this directory equals path so that's the first one let's add the doc block as well it takes param path which it will be string and then what this specific one does is set directory that's what it does it sets directory okay the next one will be get directory Basically, we're creating these two mutators to, to be able to basically get and set the directory path. So we for this one, we obviously don't have any argument. It's going to return this directory. We've made it uh, private. We don't want anyone to mess with it. So we need to provide some uh, means of actually obtaining the value and setting the value. And this one gets the directory, so the get directory. Okay, next method is the method that will actually create this image that we after. And it's going to be called the same way as the method that we're going to call on our image manager. Uh, and the name of this method is simply canvas. So public function canvas. And this method takes array of options, which will basically override the properties. Uh, and the properties that it will uh, overwrite will be things like width, height, extension, and a background. So if we want to create the image with a different dimensions, we will be able to pass them through as the key of this uh, options array. Uh, extension, if you want to specify a different one, and then the background color, you might want a different one as well. So this is what we're going to be able to uh, pass through uh, using this options array. Okay, uh, in order to do, we could do it manually from within this canvas, but let's um, do it in a little bit better way. So we get just going to uh, delegate it to another method. So this init, and we are going to pass options here. So that's this init method will basically do the job. So I'm going to add this init method here. And again, let's specify this as array, and by default, it might be empty. And then uh, what we're going to do within this init uh, method, we are going to call array walk so that we are going through each item of this options array. So options array goes as a first argument. And please refer to PHP documentation to check what this array walk does. Uh, I've discussed this in one of the previous courses. Uh, if you go to php.net, type this in within the search uh, box, obviously see the documentation to see exactly what this one does. Okay, and the second argument uh, is a callable. Uh, so I'm going to refer to the method within uh, image maker. So this, and then the method will be called associate. And after all this, what we're going to do is to build the file name. So this file name equals this file name method. Again, another method that we don't have. So what we need to do now is basically create this associate. So first of all, all these properties, which can potentially be within uh, specified as items of this options array are overwriting the properties of this uh, class. And then once we have these properties, this file name will use these properties with the new values and create the file name basic. So let's create this associate method first. So the associate after this init private function associate and then we uh, take a value as the first argument and the key as the second because that's how array walk passes uh, items from the first argument which is the array to whatever callable uh, uh, option we have as a second argument and what we're going to do here is simply this 
uh, we I'm using curly brackets. You don't have to. You just can. You can just use key. But I tend to use curly brackets around the uh, situations like this. So key equals value. So basically, what happens here? This property name, for instance, with equals whatever value is associated with it. And this options here uh, argument will be something like let's for instance say with I want to be eight hundred something like this. Then height I want to be eight hundred as well. Then background, I would like to be black, so 000, zero, zero for instance. So this is what we're going to receive through uh, this argument. We may not receive anything, and then obviously we're going to uh, leave with the default values associated with these properties. And then obviously using these keys, we associate uh, the values with the properties of this uh, class. Okay, so that's the associate method. Uh, the next method is the file name. And the file name method, what this one does, it basically implodes uh, number of properties using the uh, whatever character you're going to specify. I'm going to simply use uh, the hyphen. So let's uh, start with the method name. So private function file name. This one doesn't take any argument. As you can see, we call it here without any argument. And we are going to return and using the implode function, the glue we want to use. Again, as I said, it's up to you what you want to use. I'm going to use a hyphen. So all these properties that I'm going to pass through within the second argument to this implode function, uh, within this array, uh, will basically be concatenated using this glue. Uh, the first one will be the width. The second one will be the height. And the last one will be the background color. So whenever we create an image, it's going to look something like, let me just type it here, say uh, 600 by 400 by uh, background color, say F, 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 and then the extension dot, let's say PNG. This is going to be the file name. You can obviously specify your own way. You can use different approach, entirely up to you. That's how I've decided to do it. And then I'll, at the end, I'm going to concatenate it with a full stop and this extension. Because don't forget, obviously, these options can also contain extension. If you want to, obviously, uh, make the image with the J JPEG extension, you can use this GIF or anything else. You can pass this through, and then that's going to override the default PNG here. So we have all this concatenated with the uh, hyphen and then added the extension at the end. That's the file name which we're going to have associated with this file name property once we've called this file name uh, method after uh, walking through all these uh, properties of this array. Okay, so these two uh, methods are now completed. Now back to Canvas. So now that we've got everything instantiated, our properties now have the values associated uh, with them that we actually want to have. So the next thing to do from within this uh, Canvas method will be to check if the file actually exists. All these files will be saved to this directory here, assets, image maker, unless we've obviously overwritten, overwritten the, the path to the directory for the directory property. Uh, so let's check if the file exists. So if, and then exclamation mark, I'm going to use check for the, the opposite. This is file method, which we create in just a moment. Uh, and if it does not exist, because this is basically going to return Boolean true or false. So if it isn't, then this make and the make method will create, generate this file. Otherwise, uh, basically, otherwise we're not going to do anything because the file exists and we simply return this, uh, return this relative file path. That's how I've decided to call my method. So it's clear that this is relative uh, path. Uh, so we can pass it through to the browser. Absolute path will be the full path to the image, which we'll use behind the scenes to basically generate it and so on and check if it exists. So we have three new methods which we need to create. The first one is uh, the is file. Then we have make and relative uh, file path. Let's work on this in a following video.